Welcome to Absolute Cast. This is episode 12 and part 5 of our WWDC uh, run through, breakdown coverage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the last few episodes we've covered iOS 14, uh, iPad OS, the AirPods, Watch OS, and Big Sur. So part five is going to be all about Apple Silicon or the new Apple processors that they have announced that they're going to make part of their uh, product line. And of course, for this episode, I, I'm TJ, your host. With us, we have Udit, who has hey now guys. changed his background a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Yes. So how are you guys doing? Did you like our four episodes? which were quite long. We didn't expect it to go on for that long, but we had a lot to talk. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah. And with us, we have Knuckle, who also edits these vi- vi- uh, episodes. Hello, everyone. Well, hopefully this is the final uh, WWDC series episode. <laughs> and uh, as, a, as a special episode in this, the most of the talking will be done by TJ. Yeah, this is a <laughs> TJ special episode. So go ahead. Let's start the, our Netflix party with it. <laughs> so... so <laughs> Welcome both of you to my episode. <laughs> yes, you have two listeners already. <laughs> so basically, the reason why this this they are saying these this these things is because um, I guess they they don't really have much of, of an opinion about Apple Silicon in general, or what's the reason for that? Well, from the development aspect, I'm, I mean, I'm not a developer, and I don't have as much to do with. Firstly, Apple, <laughs> as our <laughs> listeners might have known in the last few episodes. <laughs> but okay, that apart, um, okay, I don't think it matters to me that much. When, let's say, I'm buying a laptop, I want to see the overall performance. Right. Whatever, I mean, whatever company we use wants to use whatever chip, as long as the laptop is good, it does, works wonders, I'm, I'm cool. Right. Okay, so I, I'll have, I have something to add that, so for me, it's uh, going to be more about the consumers uh, uh, experience and uh, I would take this opportunity to ask DJs you questions uh, right. how it's going to affect because the technical side uh, technical side aside I want to know how it will affect me as a consumer right I'm interested in that right because I mean honestly you guys have always used um, the architecture that supports processes like Intel Intel AMD run on the same architecture, so uh, so sort of similar architecture, uh, which is called uh, the CISC architecture. So it's the or rather the CISC um, framework architecture, whatever you want to call it, which is a more complex set of instructions for the processor. So a lot of things that they want to do or a processor needs to do can be done, and they add more. Like it's not just you know if else or there's more instruction sets, more complex instruction sets. Uh, mathematical operations, whatever, uh, mm. as opposed to what ARM does, which is a reduced instruction set, which has fewer of those things. So the general underlying architecture is very simple compared okay. to CISC, okay. and that makes it a little cheaper, a little less on overheads and things like that. It's smaller also, various, various aspects to it. Uh, what that also means is that for some applications or some pieces of code, in order to get the same outcome, maybe Cisc already has a direct path in terms of the logic path for okay. it to come up with the final answer. Because that's what a computer is at the end of the day. You give it something, it tries to find an answer for you. Right. right, right? Yeah. So, so with Cisc, it has multiple options or more options than what RISC has. Uh, right. That doesn't mean that RISC can't do it. It just means that it needs to use multiple paths to get to the same answer. Okay. Right. Okay, that's okay. the main, just to dumb it down, that's the main difference between the two. So okay. keeping that in mind, <laughs> did he call so us, one did he call us dumb? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, went on snooze, um, so I, I got my wake button when he said dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I read is uh, I think Intel is made more for performance, whereas this one is made more for efficiency. Is that true or no or... I don't know. Yeah, power efficiency or power consumption. Yeah, power That's efficiency. what ARM's main focus is to be as low power as possible. Okay. Right? That's the main objective. With Intel, that isn't necessarily the objective because they started off as desktop processing units. Right. right. And even with the laptops, you have, you know, much bigger batteries, 65 watt or in, in Apple's case, what was it, 90 watt or 100 watt 
batteries. Mm -hmm. Those are huge. So they can power your computer running at much higher um, uh, gigahertz, like uh, processing speeds, much, high, much higher processing speeds, taking much more power uh, as opposed to what ARM does. Our ARM runs on a phone, doesn't mm -hmm. need much heat, uh, doesn't need heat infrastructure that okay, much. Okay, Reduce, okay. It doesn't take as much power. Your phone runs for the entire day, two mm -hmm. days on 4,000 milliamp hours or whatever it may mm -hmm. be, you know? So okay. uh, that's the big difference. And it makes a huge, huge difference. So one of the things that I guess Apple was sort of glossed over was that they can compete with some processors. Yeah, and yeah, they can. But if you look at it, it's more of the mid to lower end processors. Okay. So the iPad, what was it? The A12Z. A12 Bionic. Yeah, A12Z Bionic, right. which is what they're which which is what they're sending in their uh, developer transition kit, right? The the DTKs. Yeah. Um, it's in the iPad and it can beat, I think, uh, one of the MacBooks or the MacBook Air or something like that. And okay. fine, okay, fair enough. On on maybe raw speed, it can do that. But can it when it comes to like an iMac or a Mac Pro? Can they achieve the same thing with a RISC architecture, an ARM architecture? Right. So that's where the real question is. So it, we just have to see. If, you see. if you see Intel's processors, they go to three, they turbo boost up to four gigahertz. Mm -hmm. uh, ARM, on the other hand, will not ideally want to go that high. Okay. It does not want to do that because it ends up becoming more power, if power hungry. So now mm -hmm. in an infrastructure where we don't have that limitation on a Mac Pro or an iMac mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, how do we, will it be able to hit that? And does that four gigahertz on an ARM processor mean the same as four gigahertz on x86 okay. processor or okay. Intel or AMD? You know, okay. so okay. that's where, that's what the interesting thing is, is just to see what it is from a pure perspective, performance perspective. So that's something that you may not notice, you may not care about at the end of the day, you know, you're like, okay, top of the line, I paid all the money, I've maxed out all the specs, this is the <laughs> top of the line, I, I know I'm gonna get performance. Right? right, but for me as a person who's interested in this, I want to know like what will that performance really be? Where is it going to come from? How is it going to come? What are the numbers? All that kind of stuff. So okay. that's one. That's one major major yep. difference. I have one question for you. So in the current Mac Pro, so I think if you go to like mid spec to Mac Pro, it can run four K, eight four K uh, videos uh, <coughs> in the timeline of like fi in Final Cut Pro with real time rendering and uh, skipping. So what do you think when uh, this uh, Apple Silicon can reach there? Do you think it can be done in two years? Because I mean, because to, until for that um, uh, period of time, uh, how do you think Apple will support Intel? So they were very vague about the kind of videos they were running in that. So mm -hmm. if you look at the Mac Pro, they have something called the Afterburner card. Yes. Right. And if you look at Afterburner, it can run, ma it can do amazing things. What we don't know is who made it. It just says it's an okay. FPGA, which is uh, a type of uh, uh, silicon or a type of chip. And that's all we know. But technically, we don't know if the Apple Silicon is um, as well, because they didn't mention anywhere. It definitely is. But they, did they mention it anywhere on their website? Actually, that's a very, very good point. <laughs> they didn't mention if it's RISC or CISC or anything like that. Yeah. But, but like, everybody said that... Uh, like it's go it's gonna be ARM, and uh, they're not gonna brand it as ARM. It'll it's, it'll be branded as Apple Silicon. Silicon. But right. uh, yeah, mm, but Apple never said that it's an ARM processor. But everybody is assuming, and mo I'm like maybe they're correct. Right. So the last chip that had an ARM ARM architecture advertised, as far as I can tell, based on the little research that I did, was in 2009 which was when, uh, which was the iPhone 3GS. That was the Cortex A8 processor, which is an ARM architecture, right? And okay. after that, we know that they have been using ARM. It has been, it's known, it's not, it's not something ambiguous or we're, we're mm -hmm. doubting, we know this for a fact. Uh, so in 2010, they had the A4 chip, which came out for the iPhone 4, the iPad, the first generation iPad, and Apple TV second generation. So that chip was there in all of these devices. So that was, Apple's own uh, silicon. Now with, with ARM, it's sort of like a conglomerate of various countries and various companies. It's not a necessarily an individual company, as far as I remember. I could be wrong on this, I, I, I might need to fact check that, but that's basically what it is. So they have built an architecture and they've, they've given it out for a relatively lower license fees. 
Okay. You okay. know, so that's where the cost saving comes in and why a company like Apple would want to potentially use that because then they can design their own, they can do their own R&D, they can do their own design, they can control the whole uh, hardware side from a chip perspective and then build the rest of the hardware around that, which will further optimize it with in terms of power consumption, heat management, performance gains, everything. So if you can dumb it, dumb it down for us, or at least for me, that... Uh, so ARM is same as Intel. No. So, no. Okay. So no. if what so, is what is ARM? Is it so, what? So if it's a component inside a chip. Um, no, ARM. ARM is like it's like the blueprint for building okay. the chip. And and what does Intel uses as a blueprint? So they use their own x86, x86. architecture. It's their own proprietary architecture. Okay. And they've Apple been building didn't have control on that. What is that? Apple didn't have control on, on no, that to build no. their workstations around that. Okay. Absolutely. So Intel sort of determines that. Uh, so for example, in your MacBooks or whatever, you'll always see that the processor is Intel i7, i5, i3, right, i9, right, whatever right, it may right, be, right? right? So that's a note. Even on win Windows, that's exactly the case. So AMD and Intel, I think, follow a similar architecture. AMD is different, but it still uses, at the bare minimum, it's CISC. Right, so those two, I think they are very similar. Now, I'm not, I'm, I don't know much about Intel's uh, architecture, so I can't really comment on that. And how, how can a, how can Windows work on both? I think Windows is built to work on both. Maybe that's how it is. You know, the okay. the you can't put, you can't simply take an AMD chip and drop it into a motherboard that that supports mm -hmm. Intel. It doesn't work of that course, way. Of course, of course. You know, so there's a lot more that goes into it. But I think the kernel for Windows is built for both. Okay. But then they have to make special drivers for each. You know, so yes. the drivers are are what let you interface between the processor and your I/O ports and all the hardware in between, and those are installed at a very low level rather than what you will install like Zoom or whatever, maybe Chrome or whatever, maybe. Okay, okay, okay. You know, so that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that answers your question. Kind of. I wasn't listening. So my second <laughs> question is. <laughs> My second question is, so most probably by this at the, by the end of the year, they're going to launch a Mac with uh, Apple Silicon. And um, mostly, maybe by in the fall when the September event, they might announce it, that it's going to launch in uh, by the end of the year. Like, what do you think? How, which which uh, MacBook is, will it be equivalent to? Because right now they are using that iPad Pro's uh, processor. A twelve. That's what, you're talking about for for the DTK, right? What's DTK? The the what was it? Ah, oh, okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so that <laughs> that you. they have that they have to uh, return to Apple anyway. Yeah, but so so let me let me put a, a throwback to when when we when App, in, Apple moved from uh, the uh, Power PC to Intel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they had a different processor unit then. Architecture is completely different. Uh, I think the biggest client was. Uh, Apple, and mm -hmm. they weren't meeting Apple's demands, so they moved to Intel. Intel was is a much bigger company, doing phenomenal things since then. Mm -hmm. That was when uh, I don't remember when that was. Quite a while ago, two thousand one or something like that. Okay. So well, it, it was a big move then, years, yeah. uh, and at that time, uh, they gave out these com these developer kits similar to what what it is now, uh, with a Pentium four, but no okay. computer came with a Pentium four. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So they came with newer processors. So just keeping that in mind, the the DTK, the developer transition kit that's gonna that's been sent or is being sent out or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, they are not gonna be any final hardware ever. Yeah. I don't expect so, the twelve right, Z right, right. Bionic to be on any computer. True. So right. they they're probably gonna announce like maybe thirteen Z or anything. But yeah, to which MacBook current MacBook you can compare that to? How good that MacBook can be? With the Apple I would Silicon. say the the now discontinued uh, twelve inch MacBook Pro, or MacBook ah, okay. sorry twelve inch or the uh, MacBook Air. Uh huh. So not I think to, that would be the, the first thing they delve into. Not in the like MacBook Pro, Pro category. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so unless they are somehow able to do like like how Intel has i three i five i seven i nine. I think if they can oh, come okay. up with something that's i three would be more for the Mac Pro, mm -hmm. uh, sorry the MacBook twelve inch type. Because um, if you remember the twelve inch was a fanless design, and it was an Intel processor, 
but it was really really underpowered so mm-hmm. i feel like maybe apple could give us something like that with the air maybe going okay. completely fanless but, but don't you think the app, the apple a12z is yeah. kind of equivalent to macbook air right now yeah it is but i think they will give it a bit more beans so to say okay more power or something like tur- uh, maybe they can turbo it up a bit more better graphics i don't know what they'll do cuz it is but, it but, is comparable right now to the macbook air uh, right now so you don't yeah. think like it will be comparable to macbook pro when they launch maybe the, the 13 year. inch yeah on the lower end i think oh, maybe okay. Mm-hmm. uh especially if they do some thermal gains and and increase the wattage somehow and i don't know what they'll do there but i think it could be yeah potentially but so so like let's for instance i have a macbook pro 16 mm-hmm. inch intel i9 should i be scared as in like support will discontinue after like 2 years or what that's the question right right so yeah. that's i guess the biggest question so if the best way to look at it is if you look back um when they moved again the previous move that they made mm-hmm. to intel uh that was also around 2 years of support they they did it um transition or support the transition was about was another 2 years or something mm-hmm. like that or was it 4 years i can't remember but they had come out with something called rosetta okay. Okay. rosetta is uh, a sort of like I, i don't want to call it a virtual machine but it's sort of like this underlying software so your application sits on top of that mm-hmm. and that Rosetta layer underneath will convert that application from for for Intel to Intel too, ARM. Yeah. ARM. So for that they came out with something called Rosetta 2. Uh the difference between the previous one and this one is that uh Rosetta before would convert the application as you run it. Okay. So I'm running it, Rosetta's converting it and then it's working with the CPU. So there's a lot of overhead in that conversion process. It becomes slow. It's like it's like saying that uh uh someone talking in english rather than someone talking through google translate with somebody in spanish for okay. example or apple translate <laughs> so <laughs> apple translate yeah so that's what i would say is the difference so obviously you could probably it could be the best translator in the world but there'll be that delay okay right okay, okay. so the difference between rosetta 2 and rosetta 1 is that rosetta 2 will do it at install time so it's like as if when you land in spain Mm-hmm. you the what spanish language has been added into your brain like neo yeah like that he's just like <laughs> download it okay now i know kung fu like yeah. something like that so that's that's i guess in a very simplistic analogy that's how i would describe it um so it's more like at, when you're installing the application uh, an intel based application into the arm or apple silicon uh, architecture it means that they converted at that installation time Oh, okay. Okay. So, so that could potentially make it a lot faster. Uh mm-hmm. which also I mean it's it's like Rosetta 2 and the Universal app uh which they mentioned even in the WWDC uh mm-hmm. and they've had it for a while the Universal <coughs> app concept but now it's become a bit better. So I was looking at Xcode's uh new I think it's called Xcode 11 if I'm not mistaken. So the new Xcode it's 11 or 12. So the new Xcode has a better integration of Universal apps and their Universal app and their xcode has a way of converting your app built before to a uh, arm based or apple silicon based app okay so that's something that's interesting that means that most developers will probably just have to open it on xcode convert it and then just tinker a little bit maybe a, a month or two months of tinkering and the software should be ideally if all things work should be ready So the transition should should be easy shouldn't be too hard should be easy but they, i mean they did it before as well right and it wasn't that easy so who's to say okay yeah. let's but see com- how well does rosetta to do yeah <laughs> coming back to my question but should i be scared so uh yes because i no. heard heard some way from other uh, podcasters and reviewers that apple might give like support for coming 10 years maybe for intel because they have so many inventory out in the market right but now but te- support in what way what kind of support are you looking for normal support as in if i take my laptop and i have a issue with it and it's not not running properly and it's an intel processor they would fix it yeah i i don't i don't think you should be worried about that okay in fact they're still going to be coming up with intel uh, laptops right yeah intel based for another yeah. year or two about another year or so they didn't so, actually specify that 
They said for two years. For two years. No, two years is the transition period. Transition period. Yeah, transition period. But he said that... Uh, uh, Yeah, they said for coming years. Yeah, said coming. Coming years. He said... I I think he even said coming this year, not coming years. So if it's only this year or if it is next year, I don't know. But he said... He, there will be new Intel computers for sure. But don't so, you think? Sorry, don't you think that when they launch Apple Silicon uh, Mac, and uh, they are going to launch on the same event, maybe they'll launch an Intel Mac as well. So they're they're gonna get themselves in an awkward position. I feel that's ridiculous. Personally, I don't understand this move. It's it's a very bizarre move. Why would you come up with new Intel computers? Just don't. I think they at the end of the day, Apple wants to make money, so they're gonna sell you laptops and. What they're going to say is that it's fine. Even our, uh, if, if, I don't know if their new work, new applications will work on Intel through a reverse Rosetta. I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> reverse. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but okay. So, so the idea of universal applications is basically like you write one set of code and it'll, it'll have, you have to do some aspects of customization, but it'll have one version for iOS one version for iPad, one version for Mac Intel, one version for Mac, Mac Apple. Mac Apple. I don't know what to call it. Like, what do you call it? Apple <laughs> Silicon? Mac Can I just call Silicon. it ARM from now on in, this, in the rest of this episode? So Mac <laughs> Mac ARM. Silicon. Okay. Yeah. Mac, Mac, Mac Silicon, whatever. Yeah. They're all Silicon. At the end of the day, they're all made from Silicon. Okay, so, fine. So that's why. <laughs> they're, they're calling it Apple Silicon because it's like, we are making our own silicon. If right. you see the, oh my God, if you see, the, I found it super cringy, but if you see the, the WWDC when, or whatever the launch event was, when they, when they moved to Intel, mm-hmm. you see this guy from Intel come uh, okay. in, in like this, uh, what's that suit called? It's, it's a, suit, a suit that people wear in, a, in manufacturing of uh, processors. Because they are, okay. it's a zero dust environment, right? So they have okay. to wear a suit. They go through this. You know how when when you see these space sci-fi movies, right. they come in and they're like decontamination. So it's kind of like that, but like for a hazmat dust. hazmat suit. It's like a hazmat suit, but it's not really hazmat. It's the okay, point okay. is to just keep your like dust coming off of you like your dead skin cells from okay, inside okay, the suit. Okay. That's okay. kind of the point. Yeah. And so he comes in wearing that, and he hands him like this disc, okay. which is actually a disc which holds multiple silicon chips. It's, okay. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I studied it in university, so that's why I'm really fascinated about this stuff. But basically, like one disc of silicon can make, I don't know, depending on how big the physical size of the chip is, but it can make a lot of chips, maybe 50, okay. 60, maybe 100, depending. I don't know how, what the exact number is, but a lot. Mm-hmm. So he hands him one of those. He hands Steve Jobs one of those. And then he, okay. it's just, it's just so cringy. I'm glad they didn't do something like that now. <laughs> well, well, he should have called him at the beginning and like, now you can go back. <laughs> yeah. So that entire disc is called a silicon wafer. Okay. And it's a huge disc. It's about this big. Like, it's it's called a silicon wafer. So that's why the, the a processor is made on silicon. Because carbon mm-hmm. is the most conductive material in, mm-hmm. in that sense. So our silicon, the silica, silicon version of the carbon structure is the most conductive material. So that's why they use it. Okay. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know if I want to call it silicon. Let's just call it arm. Uh, I don't fine. know. Let's just call uh, it arm. <laughs> Apple arm. Yes. Because they are twisting our arm. Are those mm-hmm. laptops going to cost us an arm and a leg? So, so cost is something that I find very interesting. I don't know. What do you guys think? Since Apple is now going away, Intel Intel chips are very expensive. Buying an Intel chip, like in your laptop, your Intel chip is, if you're going for your particular laptop knuckle, would be, I think, around $300. Or two fifty dollars just for the just for the chip, okay. For the Intel processor, so that you pay that much for that. So now, if Apple controls that, that cost of theirs will be going down to like thirty or forty dollars. But they'll okay. have to invest on R and D now. Sure, I'm I'm saying including all of that. <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh. Intel charges that much for their R and D also, right? R and D marketing promotion everything, uh, they must and then yeah. profit. So, what do you think? Do you think the cost? Well, okay, what are your thoughts based on that? What I just so said? I think now uh, yeah. since they've just started making these, so maybe initially they will they will they won't reduce the price as much. That's what I think initially. Have you ever seen an Apple product go down in price as such when they launch new ones? No. So I can't see it being initially high and then later lower for sure. Yeah. Okay. I I, I do not mean it will go down later. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, okay. <laughs> since it's an Apple product, of course, it will it will not be cheap now, and then later it will have more features, so it will not be cheap then. Right. Yeah. Apple, what do you think? Yeah. 
again, it won't be cheap, but I think they are going to position it in that way that it's more bank on your money. As in, I know, I remember when this uh, 16 inch came out, everybody was saying that it's uh, quite worth the investment because right. you're getting a lot for, but you are paying a lot, but you're getting a lot as well. A lot of laptop for that money. Yeah. Yes. So I think they're going to play with that concept. So I've been seeing a lot of people commenting that now laptops might become a little cheaper, not much, like $200, $300 cheaper, which can be considerable, uh, that it'll become cheaper. I honestly don't think so. I think Apple wants to keep that more, that much margin more for themselves. Of course. Yeah, I can't imagine. (laughs) Apple, oh, we made less, less money. I mean, we, we can make like we're, it's costing us less to manufacture this and people are still buying it at the same price. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I mean, Apple will be like, what? People are just giving one kidney for this? You yeah, exactly. Better. <laughs> we made but, these chips. Now give one and a half kidneys. But I think it's going to be uh, really difficult for them, for the for the years that they are going to st- sell Intel as well, to position their Apple arm between Intel. Like how to position the pricing that uh, there is an option for everyone. Because what do you right mean? Now, like a, a lower end option or... No, but like so, Intel-based MacBooks, there are like plethora of them. I mean, like for every price segment, there is one. So where where do you think they're gonna position this one? Well, I don't think they'll be positioning it for the Pro unless they're going like full guns blazing and they're like, oh yeah, let's kill the i9. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they're gonna go for the high end. Oh, because, okay. Uh, I think they'll start off at start off with the lower yeah. end. Start off, okay. And I think what what computers they're going to be coming out with over the next over the whatever next few months or year or whatever, which are Intel, I think they will be still on the higher end. Yeah, because they still need to support the Mac Pro users. Yeah, absolutely. I can't imagine like suddenly you abandon a Mac Pro user who bought a computer <laughs> worth twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars. It's insane. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the part that I'm. I myself am not too sure but, about how they're going to go about doing it. But the thing is, in this whole thing, I haven't heard from, maybe I didn't look for it, but I haven't heard much from Intel, how they are feeling about it, because they, obviously, obviously they know about this move and uh, yeah. how is it, how is it looking for them for the, in the future? And by the way, by the way, before that, I like this way, us interviewing the host. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Much, As better, it turns much better. Much better. By the way, I'm no expert in this field. I, I the last time I learned about this was like 15 years ago. So it's not 15 years ago, less than that. But it's still a long time ago. Yeah. Right. That goes uh, to prove how dumb are we? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, no. I'm talking about outdated stuff, which half of which I've forgotten. But okay. you're not in this field, so there's no judgment there at all. Like zero. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I have I have written down this point in my notes that what does this move mean for Intel and AMD? For mm-hmm. honestly, I was thinking that yeah, Apple has been making their silicon since what is it, uh, two thousand ten, right? That's the first time they made their first silicon chip. Intel they started in two thousand five. I have it written down here, I'm not mm-hmm. reading it. So fifteen years they've been with Intel. Uh, out of those fifteen years, I guess. 10 years they've been making their own chips, starting with, like I said, the I- iPhone 4, uh, Apple TV, right? So, uh, Which chip was that, the iPhone 4 again? A4. Uh, I just read online that it was manufactured by Samsung, the Apple A4 and A5. It could have been. It could have been manufactured by them, because right. they may not have had the silicon process. manufacturing process. Uh, right. I, I still don't think they necessarily manufacture it in-house till quite recently. Uh, okay. I don't know who manif- like where their manufacturing plant is for their chips, but yeah, Samsung did make quite a few chips for them. I mean, Samsung is one of the bigger silicon manufacturers out there for smaller devices. Intel right. doesn't necessarily play in that market. Huawei, Samsung, uh, Snapdragon, these guys, Qualcomm, okay. sorry, they they tend to participate yeah, more Qualcomm. in the smaller smaller device market, uh, which is why, like, if you see. Um, Samsung has a massive hold on the market because they do displays, they do batteries, they do, you know, yes, they manufacture true, true, stuff. True, true. So yeah. their margins are much higher than what Apple has on the iPhone even. Oh, you know, so okay. when, when Samsung charges a thousand dollars, right, that thousand dollars is a lot of profit for them. Their screens are theirs, mm-hmm. the battery is theirs, even if it right, may explode, right, right, it's right, theirs. Right, right. The processor is theirs, like parts are, it's insane. Uh, Samsung is a huge company, huge company. Yes. So. True. Uh, that's one thing, but I mean, uh, Apple is like a one 
point something trillion dollar company at this point. So they have a lot of money backing them. They have the expertise, the supply chain stuff sorted out. So to answer your question specifically, what does it mean for Intel and AMD? That's my question too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This, uh, there is one side where I don't think it matters to them that much. So mm -hmm. a good number would be to see what's the Windows or the uh, non-Mac percentage of computer users, which is far higher than Mac percentage. Yeah. I think it, last I remember was 25% 25, 25 of the market is Apple okay. in terms of desktop computers. So the remaining 75%, the remaining that is almost entirely theirs. Right. Even though this year they've had their ass handed to them by AMD because AMD's desktop processors are amazing. Like amazing. Power, perf power consumption is amazing. Heat is pretty decent. The performance is phenomenal. The price point is cheap. Okay. So if a Intel were to be afraid of somebody, it would be AMD. Uh -huh. oh, okay, right. That's what, my, that's what my opinion is. What I'm more concerned about is Thunderbolt. Okay. Yes. So Thunderbolt, you guys know what Thunderbolt is? Yes. I've yeah? heard, yes. So Thunderbolt is an Intel developed technology that's available on any Intel laptop. Uh, it's like USB-C and they've had it since before USB-C form factor. They've just sort of form, they fit it to that. Uh, but Thunderbolt is, if you see USB-4, USB-4 yeah. uh, protocol, that's okay. now matching up to Thunderbolt. Okay, I think even my MacBook had the Thunderbolt board. Yeah, yes. But I never it's, used it. Yeah, because you needed a proprietary adapter and that whole infrastructure in ecosystem is relatively expensive, but, the, but if mm -hmm. you're a power user, it's phenomenal. So it's like okay. uh, you take a giant computer, uh, a, a monitor that supports Thunderbolt, plug that in, and that's all you need to connect your laptop to it. You know, you, okay. you have your okay. USBs there, peripherals there, power goes through that, everything is through one port. Well, so. Okay. Thunderbolt is an Intel technology, so if they move away from Intel, that's the end of Thunderbolt. Oh, okay. On, okay. on at least Apple. Right. I think I haven't seen Thunderbolt on other laptops. Hardly, I think. I've mostly you know, seen I, them on Apple MacBooks. I don't know if what happened with Thunderbolt and Windows. I, I don't know. Maybe the Windows okay. manufacturers found it too expensive and it's only for creatives or I don't know what. Okay. I've not okay. followed that too much, but it's right. a, I know that it's an Intel built technology. And okay. I was seeing somewhere that because USB 4 mm -hmm. sort of matches up with Thunderbolt in terms of speed and performance and throughput and everything, I think that's the end of Thunderbolt. Okay. Because it didn't catch on with anybody else except for Apple by the looks of it. I mean, that's a, also a good observation from Odit there. But I'm looking yeah. on online, I think Thunderbolt comes in... Uh uh, this Dell XPS and HP Spectre, they all yeah maybe a couple of like higher end stuff yeah high end Razer stuff. Blade and Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme yeah. yeah it makes sense because those are higher end ones Th right. Thunderbolt would not be cheap I think I honestly think this is the end of Thunderbolt this is actually good for us as consumers because now we're unifying everything to USB C and just USB C hmm. so yeah, if USB yes. four is as good and we yeah. get monitors that work on USB four. Mm -hmm. uh, cheaper laptops can adhere to that standard rather than paying a higher tax to Intel and getting Thunderbolt. Right. I don't know, that's my opinion. I could be wrong about it, but it just it's interesting to see. I think Thunderbolt was a great technology, but uh, if, if Intel wants adoption, they need to reduce their price point and make it m more available to consumers and become a standard across the board. I think that's what Intel True. is missing as a, as a company overall. I don't know. Right. So I was just reading uh, some developers did the tests on the ARM architecture mm -hmm. and some results that were leaked. I mean, they were not, obviously not supposed to post it anywhere, but somewhere. Did you see? Did you happen to read? I haven't anywhere? actually looked into that at all. Okay, so, so I think I uh, read uh, it was 30% less efficient on single core, but it was way more efficient on multi core. Okay. Okay, so that's what I just read. But then there were not many details. So I think we'll just have to wait for some time and yeah. see. I think even a 30% deficit is not bad because this wasn't built for desktop or for laptops. Right. So I think Apple will overcome that deficit. But 30% right. less compared to what? Uh, the Intel uh, equivalent, 
X86. Which would be which would be the X86. I mean, yeah, I don't but know what, what would it be? Intel's what chip? I5, I3. I I don't. I think maybe the I5. Perhaps I don't remember which one they said it was, but uh, this is just something I read in one of the articles I was going through. But even even if it's less, it doesn't mean the apps will run slow, right? Because it's a whole another silicon, separate silicon, and uh, maybe Apple is efficient enough to run those apps in a, at a faster speed using less benchmark uh, numbers. I don't know. Highly unlikely. Thirty percent is a huge amount, and like I said, because of the difference of the risk and CISC architectures, risk applications run the risk of running <laughs> slower, and that's what's going to happen potentially. So maybe that's the reason why. No, I think Udit, uh, what Udit is talking about, uh, they compared it with. I think I read it in the morning. I, they compared it with iPad Pro, running A twelve Z. Oh, they compared okay. an iPad to the DTK. Same. Yes. Ah, so then... Maybe DTK like software is also not polished enough right now. Maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know what the DTK is built with, but I mean, it has 16 GB of RAM, if that helps. But that won't really help necessarily yeah. with a lot of this. I don't know. I, I, I think Intel, uh, Apple's uh, iPad RAM is built around that. So there could be a throttling in terms of RAM access speeds. Uh, mm -hmm. Could be a... Various reasons, actually. I'm not sh entirely sure what it could be. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I would not I would not say that, like, if you compare a ARM to an i5, it would make sense that multi-threaded performance could be a little better because, you know, like I said, if you have to take multiple paths, each mm -hmm. processor can take one of the paths and then they can right. meet at the end. This is yeah, could be. theoretical. I don't actually know if this is how it works, but it, in my head, that seems to make sense. If they don't, <laughs> okay. they should probably try that out. Maybe that's why in, in, in multi-threaded, uh, it seems to work a little faster. Okay. It may not actually be faster, but it maybe just seems to be that way. So okay. I don't know. Uh, the other thing to think about, I guess, is boot camp. So no boot camp. Right. No. Not necessarily. I don't think, I don't think that's true though. So Apple, as far as I understand from what I've read and seen on the internet, that Bootcamp is essentially no longer supported by Apple. Mm -hmm. uh, but also it needs support from Microsoft in the sense that Microsoft supports primarily Intel devices or AMD devices, right? Mm -hmm. right. So they don't necessarily support ARM, but there is a Windows version of ARM. The only problem is that it's licensed only to PC manufacturers. So you can't go off the shelf and buy a Windows 10 for ARM. And Windows 10 for oh, ARM, which okay. I think was a Surface X or whatever it was called, was okay. garbage. It didn't work. It wasn't very successful. Uh, but it, I mean, the Windows itself was fine. It's just that there was not too many applications because, again, they need to go through the same process. Mm -hmm. So the problem with that was that uh, the Windows 10 applications that ran on x86, they would run it through an emulator of sorts, which okay. is not like Rosetta. It's like the original Rosetta, where it okay, would translate okay, okay. while you're running the program. Right. And it would translate it to 32-bit architecture, not 64-bit. Okay. So 64-bit gets access to a lot more RAM, uh, RAM channels and processor channels, as opposed right. to 32-bit. It's much, much smaller. 64-bit is huge. Um, right, right. So that's one thing. 32-bit, I think, is limited to 16 GB RAM access, rather than 64-bit, which is, I don't know, 600, 500 GB, something like that. It's huge. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a big difference. It's a massive difference. So that's one reason probably why Windows 10 for ARM didn't work. So if Windows can fix that, there's no reason why Bootcamp shouldn't work then. You know? Okay. If okay. you have a Rosetta style, Rosetta 2 style uh, transcoder of sorts that, you know, mm -hmm. when you install an application on Windows for ARM, converts it at that point, and then you're running native for all intents and purposes, mm -hmm. that's... Kind of makes sense to me that I, I don't see why bootcamp should be dead. It's just a matter of, you know, Apple giving it some support and Windows giving it some support and making that, you know, match made in heaven kind of situation. If that works, then great. I, I've not run bootcamp on my Mac for years. The last time I did it, it worked really well. I was very impressed. Okay. Uh, but in the demo in the WWDC, they did talk about virtual machines running and they showed a sample Linux. of Linux. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I don't know, maybe they didn't show Windows because of a flex problem rather than a, <laughs> uh, <laughs> rather yeah, than a technical I guess problem. So. Right, right, okay. so I can't see why that wouldn't work. 
Um, but yeah, I think that's it's an interesting move overall. I I wouldn't say, yeah. I don't know. Okay, and uh, I think uh, Silicon Arm also has better machine learning, right? I mean, it's built for that to some extent. The bionic, they keep talking about bionic. The whole terminology they use bionic is for machine learning. So they have built that those uh, instruction sets on the lower end, on the on the chip level. They've okay. built those instruction sets to facilitate machine learning. So okay, okay, okay. I'm sure they're going to focus on that a bit more, okay. which, which, which would mean that you use your computer, it will be become faster over time, in oh, theory. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? Because a machine sense. is learning. Yeah. So in theory, <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if that works, then great. Uh, I don't know what happens if you format your computer. Does it happen machine unlearning? I don't know. <laughs> so you, usually, usually when you format your computer it usually becomes faster now when you format it it will forget everything what you wanted <laughs> yeah or or it's like oh wait i only know how to do these old things now please continue doing that like i can't unlearn that i don't know if that's a thing i have no idea <laughs> but that's a good question i i didn't think of machine learning at all actually i haven't thought about it much because there's so many other things to think about but mm. machine learning because bionic by itself has that sort of design already by Apple and the processors. Mm -hmm. So potentially, I don't know, could be. That's a good yeah. point. That's something to really think about. I, I think it could be. I think it could be. So I, I wanted to talk about this part, right? So I think from my side, most of my points are pretty much covered. There is this really nice article by The Verge about uh -huh. Rosetta 2. It is okay. a little, little bit, little bit, itty bitty bit on the technical side, but I think okay. it's really interesting to, to read. Um, okay. Also, another thing to point out with Rosetta, with the previous Rosetta, they released it with uh, with Tiger, right? OS and oh, Tiger, okay. okay. And it was the support was there only till three versions later, which was Lion. Okay. After Lion, they killed the support. That was only three versions, which would be I don't know how many years that was, but three versions. Okay. So that's a number to keep in mind because that means that now with Big Sur, you know. Then the next version, Big Mam Sir, <laughs> and then whatever the third version is after that, <laughs> No Mam Sir, would be like, I don't know, those three versions would be the only one that get Rosetta 2. I don't know. That's, that's the more worrying part. That means that, let's say, um, SketchUp mm -hmm. doesn't build a version for um, Apple ARM okay. or Mac ARM. Like, um, and they've only worked so knuckle this directly affects you right yes. so if they don't convert that how are you going to run or how are you going to sell that software later on how are you mm -hmm. if you're a business that has apple computers that run sketchup how am i going to run it after three four years i'll have to use all the hardware i can't update my hardware i can't update my os versions uh, i'm done that's 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 where i'm stuck so for me, what a lot of people are talking about that, oh yeah, you can totally buy an Intel computer now. For two, three years, four years, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I use my computer for, for like five to 10 years. That's the reason why I go for Apple. My Windows computers, yeah, they used to die out in three, four years. But my Mac computers, they last. That's the whole point. That's why I'm ready to drop 10, 15,000 dirhams on a computer as opposed to uh, on Windows four or five is as much as I'd go, maybe six or seven, I'll go ma maximum. Because I know that those won't last me. 10,000 dirhams for a computer that lasts me 10, 10 years, it's 1,000 dirhams a year. Yeah. That's not bad. 15 years, 1,500 dirhams a year. That's still not bad. And yeah. they work really well. But if I have to change my computer in four years or five years, now the computer is costing me so much more. So mm -hmm. I, for one, I'm not upgrading. I was planning on upgrading this year. Okay. I'm not upgrading anymore. I'm going to wait it out until I see what's happening, what's the new update market, how, how that's going to pan out then I will consider upgrading. upgrading. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. So that's something. Rega regarding regarding uh, the power consumption, I'm reading an article on iMore and it says that uh, that that will play a major role because uh, currently on, an, on a MacBook, uh, Apple says that you can get 11 to 12 hours of battery life but usually it's less than that if you l use yeah. it moderately but compared to compare that with an ipad pro you can easy, comfortably get nine to ten hours of battery life and ipad pro runs a apple chip yeah and so, pretty intense software as well so <laughs> yeah i can totally see power co power consumption is the core of it mm -hmm. i would say power consumption heat 
because iPads I, and iPhones and all don't have any fans. They don't have as such any moving moving parts to do cooling. So mm-hmm. if you put on a cooling system onto your laptop and you use Apple chips, that'll be phenomenal. I think I think there is a, a real market for the twelve inch or twelve inch like MacBooks to come back, where they're fanless or you know that kind of system. Uh, mm-hmm. But with a MacBook Pro or a Mac Pro or an iMac or whatever with fans, I think it could really make a big difference in terms of performance and heat management. Even though power in those scenarios is not that big of a deal because you're plugged in all the time. Yeah. I don't know if they if they plan on giving us an iMac with a battery. Like Ooh. I can sit outside with my <laughs> iMac. <laughs> Maybe that this is why nice. they charge so much for the wheels for the Mac Pro. <laughs> <laughs> you can tack on a battery and still wheel it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, for the laptops, I think it would be great. But not only that, think about it this way. What's the coolest thing about your phone when you launch a program or an app or whatever? Oh, what? And what's the difference between launching an app on your phone and on it's a, the computer? It's much faster on the phone. It's instant. Instant. Yeah, it's okay. instant. So that could be a potential game changer on Mac. Like, I mean, already my apps open really fast on my Mac. It's right. almost in- instantaneous. So combined it's with machine learning, you can just think about it and it'll open, is it? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, huh, this is when it comes. I should, the app should be open. When yeah, I yeah. Mean, like, all you have to do is cross your eyes for multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like Knuckle sent me, me, sent me a message. The audio is ready and already Chrome is open with Anchor. Like it's done. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> it's already there. So yeah, I, I mean, I think I think with all of that, instant instant application launches could be something that's very interesting. Uh, low power states when you close your computer, you know, mm-hmm. and just sitting there on the side that you know uh, sleep standby mode. The power consumption of that will be very minimal. So you can leave your laptop for four five days, come back after that, and you still have some battery to get some work done. Like an iPad, okay. you can leave it for a couple of weeks and you'll come back this 20% yeah, battery, 20-30%. Sure. Right, right, right. So, I mean, even your phone, if you don't use, if you don't have your uh, cell signal on right. and you leave it on the side, it'll go, it'll stay on for a while. Yes, of course, of course, can. Okay. So that's a big difference. Windows, uh, even MacBooks right now, they don't last that long. Okay. How long does so, it last for if you just I, keep it? If I leave my MacBook like full charge and close, close the screen, maybe a couple yeah. of days. Oh, Okay. Maybe, maybe. I think okay, that's stretching okay. it. I don't know. I've not really, I've not really done it in that scenario. There's always, I've used it for some amount and then closed it and gone away. Right. Okay, so it's okay. potentially like a day or two, I think, mm. which is not okay. bad. Yeah. I think same, same for sure. me. If I, if I just put my MacBook on sleep, it'll, it'll give me like a couple of days. Uh, it'll stay awake. Right. Stay so, awake. Then it goes into hibernation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. So I wanted to check with DJ. I just read something I shared on Slack as well. CPU versus system on a chip. Yeah. So yeah, these are SOC. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? They say that uh, so a, like you can say a thirteen processor or a thirteen CPU, but precisely they are like you're not correct. That yeah. Is, so what does the dif- What is the difference? So uh, a CPU is essentially what I've been talking about. Hmm. It's the, it's the bit like, so it's the bit that makes the decisions for you. It's the one that gets like, Oh, okay. I, my user wants to do this. This is how he will go about doing it. And this is the output. This is how, this is what the answer is, right? That's mm-hmm. what the CPU does. But a system on a chip is the entire system, your Ram, your Ram access, your graphics, uh, graphic, I guess, uh, sort of, I don't know what the word is like. You can think of it like the Havaldar, the traffic cop. Okay. which determines how much what information goes to graphics what goes to audio mm-hmm. okay there might be an audio chip ml is part of that so there's another ml side of it that goes on of it on it so if you look at the the like intel's chips right the cpus they're not cpus they are socs because they have a graphics chip specially built for it so mm-hmm. it's built as it's built on the same chip it's fabricated on the same chip right so it's a whole system there. It's not just that. So a lot of uh, a lot of uh, processors come with a certain uh, uh, caching. So they have L1, L2, L3 caches. Yeah. If you'll see the specs, they'll they'll mention it over there. So these are all part of the SOCs. Okay. So what's what's this? Uh, uh, how is this relevant to ARM versus Intel on Apple? 
so I don't know. I I, I actually I'm not too sure. I, I need to read this a little more, but okay. I would assume like so if Apple is managing the entire SOC, then they're managing the graphics as well. Okay. The, and I think that's what they're doing. They are doing that because if you look at uh when they compare a, the A series chips to the previous generation or whatever, uh they always talk about graphics also. Mhm. you know so things like that the machine learning is definitely one side of it so those are the things that apple will be manufacturing as part of their silicon mm. so it could be that there will be better graphics or not better mm. graphics it could be either way you know it could be that the machine learning is phenomenal intel i don't know if they do so intel has different socs as well uh, the i series socs are com- consumer based so there's no not much uh, machine learning in that so if you have server uh, xeon range of socs they have a different kind of concept behind them mm-hmm. they work they have different elements on the soc if you look at the the ones for iot those have a different requirements so they, their soc is a little different so that's how they go about differentiating the lines it depends mm-hmm. on the end user so the i series okay. is the most generic okay okay you know it's trying to do the best of all worlds but the iot ones will have like very specific for iot low power consumption you know uh trying to do something with uh, more communicational stuff for uh data recording kind of processing tasks and things like that mm-hmm. they won't have graphics in there they won't have uh, ui related things in there you know so stuff like that a uh, server will have more data processing rather than anything else okay so okay. and so uh, uh, i series would have graphics in there would have ram in there data processing in there pro- general processing in there as well, all those kind of things so when you talking about graphics how how they do how do they get affected uh, with the change in the processor because like right now i know because in uh, in the macbook that 5600m uh amd nvidia oh it's the amd amd yeah amd sorry yeah, it's right. really per- performing really well yeah but like right now i have 5500 m i haven't tested it extensively but uh, is it is it is the graphics pegged to the processor it'll be both so you have intel's discrete graphics hmm. uh, sorry integrated graphics that's the intel, intel yeah, uhd graphics 630 yeah. yeah i have so yeah so that's actually pretty good too it's okay. good enough to get you by uh, the problem with chrome specifically is that they tend to use your discrete graphics Mm-hmm. Safari tends to live on integrated graphics. That's where they get the performance benefits. And okay. it's like it's like you have to power only one chip for the graphics and for the processing and everything. The mm-hmm. moment you move to discrete, now you're sending power to another thing. So now it's going to take more power out of your battery. So that's okay, the basic okay, concept okay. behind that. Um okay. from a power perspective, I think it'll be great. From a performance perspective, I think it might be fine because iPads are really good. iPhones are phenomenal with their graphics. Yes. And if you saw in the demo they showed Maya which i don't know if it was like it wasn't a running thing i think it was sort of pre-rendered i'm not entirely it, sure it wasn't rendered it was just a blueprint yeah but it was pre it was like pre uh processed yes yeah so, so that makes a huge difference in a, in a laboratory for a day to get it for it yeah. to, <laughs> and to show it in the next day exactly so i think that that part like that's a little bit of a scam in that sense like they like cloak and dagger kind of thing you don't really know what's going on yeah, but i think yeah. given that ipad and the iphone are phenomenal gaming uh, devices for mobile games i think i think it should be fine i think that just because they're moving away from uh, from intel doesn't mean that their graphics don't have to don't work with amd and with uh, nvidia right so it could be i mean because look at uh, nvidia had the tegra processor right which is built on arm mm mm-hmm. and that had phenomenal uh, graphics capabilities as well so there's no reason why nvidia can't build a a processor a, a gpu that works really well with them mm-hmm. discrete gpu mm-hmm. not the integrated one and uh, another thing the apple arm natively would support ipad apps right right so that's definitely something to think about it would so you could start seeing ipad applications or iphone applications But then there are so many apps uh, which require your hardware sensors like accelerometer or whatever. So how would that support all of these? You can always simulate it with buttons okay. or keyboards or whatever it may be. Or maybe they'll stick a gyroscope and and those uh sensors in the computers, I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine taking my laptop and doing that. That, <laughs> exactly. that seems bizarre. <laughs> But I mean, uh what what's the objective of putting an iPad app on the computer is it just to be able to use the accelerometer based things i don't think so 
Well, yeah, not just that, but just to you know test the apps, maybe or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I was listening to the Back to Work podcast, re- mm-hmm. sort of revolving around this. I haven't finished the episode, but uh, they were hell bent against having iPhone and iPad apps on macOS, which I completely mm-hmm. understand because from a design perspective, it's really not meant for a click based thing yeah. and like we yeah. said last time i don't want to be touching my imac like <laughs> it's really bizarre and i can't and I, also we we have uh, iphone apps on the macbook like calculator that's an iphone app straight yeah up. but it's it's relatively new they've used that universal app language to build it onto this but so it just becomes the UI is iphone yeah it's iphone and it's more touch based so it doesn't really translate well so yeah. that from a design perspective i'm not that happy but the fact that Instagram doesn't have a full version of their app on the phone on the laptop. Now if you, if it can integrate with my camera and I can do pretty much everything I want to do, I'm happier using it on my on my computer. I used to have this app which also I paid for which is called Flume, which is really good by the way. Really okay. really good. Definitely worth the money that you spend on it. Uh you can done you can run Instagram on your computer with that. But okay. now with the with Uh, Apple Arm or Apple Silicon, you can probably have Instagram running on your uh, on your MacBook, which is which. So apps like that, I mean, running, I could run WhatsApp natively on my on my computer rather than having this web client that that they have packaged into an app. Yeah. Okay. So stuff like that. I mean, it would be it would be nice. Uh, if you are in India, you can't access TikTok now, but if you wanted <laughs> to have TikTok on your laptop, you can have TikTok there as well. So the idea behind it is nice. I like the idea of that. Like if there's no other option, I'm okay with a touch-based interface for my click-based computer. Uh okay. I it's not the right interface, but okay. And wow. I don't have to use my tiny phone screen. Uh-huh. Right. I have a question which is quite generic. So are there any uh laptops in the market right now, be it Windows or MacBook with multi processor I know about cores there are multi core processor uh, uh, multi core processors but there are like multiple number of processors in a machine with multiple cores in in a laptop I don't think so can they do it with this one because anyways as i said it's the uh, power consumption will be better so they might use just one fan and an additional i'm mean, like just i'm playing a fantasy Yeah, I mean see there. in desktops people have tried it. Okay. Um they have not been the most elegant in uh, method of doing it and some motherboard manufacturers have also tried to do it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh they don't have the best performance but I mean there's no reason why not. Apple could try it out. Mm-hmm. Because Drop if it to it, A12s if, uh, in in a computer and you've got double the <laughs> processing speed. It won't be double. There'll be some some loss or degradation of performance because you're running two separate right, processors right. they need to talk to each other and communicate mm-hmm. and like how we can kya aaj piya maine ye piya so that translation as opposed to a, a a person knowing how many ye piya p i don't have to ask myself that so that's yeah, the yeah. difference between running two processors at the end of the day you will lose some from through the communication that's why nvidia's sli when they when you talk about two graphics cards sli is great but you still mm-hmm. still lose a little performance uh crossfire or whatever amd calls it they have their own version which is built specifically to minimize that that uh loss of performance or degradation okay uh so the gains are if the, as long as the gains are higher than that which it should be mm-hmm. like in nvidia sli the loss is very smaller it's it's enough to be negligible you mm-hmm. know as a, as opposed to buying a whole other computer or you not right. getting that performance run two cards in sli you get double almost double right. the graphics So it's sort of like that. I can see that. I mean it's an interesting idea. I don't know if Apple will do it because it's it's bizarre or or maybe they'll do it because it's bizarre. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we cannot build you a ARM based Mac Pro right now, but here mm. are like 6 A12Z. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yeah, and your upgrade options are add one more A12, add one more yeah. A12, add one more A12. <laughs> you can ju- they can just stack up like, those DTKs on top of each other. <laughs> and make a full like full blown mac pro yeah, maybe maybe yeah. you never know like you a customized know. starbucks coffee you can add, add as many shots as you want yeah <laughs> just yeah, go on adding <laughs> just keep adding and you just keep getting more hyped <laughs> yeah it could right. happen could happen so i think that any any other question i think that kind of run run uh, summarizes everything or runs through everything yeah i just had yeah. one one comment to make 
uh, which was that if you look at the devices that run Apple chips today, mm -hmm. like today without the other announcement, you have the iPhone, you have the mm -hmm. iPod, you have the iPad, you have the Apple Watch, the Apple TV, the HomePod, and I don't want to count it, but let's say AirPods and all the Beats mm -hmm. stuff, because they have the whatever it's called, the U, no, what's the chip called? S1? No. U1? U1 U is for that, 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 that's a different one. That sounds right. So that's another chip that they make. They have yeah. the S, S1 for the, S they have the S series yeah. for the watch. W. They have. W, w is, is it? Maybe, watch. whatever it is. Yeah. They have another one for security. So they have been making chips. The, so, and what are the devices that don't have Apple chips in them? You have the Mac Pro, the Mac Mini, the iMac, iMac Pro, MacBook, MacBook Air, and MacBook Pro. And you could say that the MacBooks are all roughly one line, the iMacs yeah. are roughly one line, and the Macs are roughly one line. Yeah. You know, so it's, we're talking about three Lines. Three devices. Let's 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 stack on the Mac, the iMac, the Mac Pro as a separate device. So that's four, yeah. four that don't have it, and what seven that have it. Yes, true. I think that's, that's a very good way to tell that 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 might be their hierarchy. They're going to start with the MacBooks, and the the last one would be Mac Pro. Yeah, I I would say that that's the way they would go about doing it. Yeah. That seems that seems fair. So you go from the MacBook, maybe the MacBook Air, unless they they can combine that line and make it just MacBook or just MacBook Air, like they kind of have now. Mm -hmm. So MacBook, MacBook Air, then the MacBook Pro, or it could be MacBook, then uh, iMac, then the MacBook Pro, then the iMac Pro, or Mac Mini somewhere in between, yeah, right. and then the Mac Pro. Mac Pro. Mac Pro. Because like the DTK is kind of like a Mac Mini. Okay. Yeah. Right, kind of. I mean, True. imagine your iPad having 16 GB of RAM. <laughs> That'd be so cool. I think it does, what, 8 GB or 4 GB, something like that? It got, yeah. uh, I think, 4 GB. 4 rest, GB, like, right? yeah. I think if, if it has, like, 16 GB, the rest of, like, 12 GBs will be, like, Nothing. they will be learning machine learning, talking to each other. Only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they've, they've become sentient. They've yes. their own world, and then they've destroyed the world also in the back. Like, yes. <laughs> it's all happened... <laughs> <laughs> in the blink of an eye. Yeah, that's funny. Cool. Yeah, the only yeah. only other thing, what you were talking about graphics, I think that's the mm -hmm. one that's unknown. Because for me, the fact that they can build something like an afterburner, which is, it's not graphics, it's video processing specifically. It's a very one, like, directional card. And I don't know who really manufactured it. I tried to look into it. I, I didn't find out. Uh, any of the listeners, if you guys know, please let us know. That'd be great. But uh, that's something that I'm not clear about. If they can use AMD and NVIDIA and and if they aren't, then are they making their own or how are they going about doing that? Like, mm -hmm. that's what's interesting. I mean, Metal already is pretty great in terms of performance and all of that. So we'll have to see. Right. Cool. Okay. So now that you guys know all of this stuff, yes. what do you guys <laughs> think? I'll send you my mail address so you can send my certificate. <laughs> <laughs> you have graduated participation, from part, University. No, no, participation only. Oh, participation. <laughs> participation. <laughs> He's like, I showed up. I don't know when I left. <laughs> yes. I asked questions. <laughs> oh, this chips. What is dip with chips? <laughs> yes. Right. Cool. Okay. So I think that's it, right? We can end this episode. What do you guys think? Yes. I guess so. So does that conclude WWDC for us? Yeah, I think, I think, but uh, I think this one, and because a lot of things will unfold uh, regarding around uh, the silicon. So I think maybe after a few weeks or a month or a couple of months, we can do a follow up. I think, yeah, yeah, that, that was an idea. I think you had, uh, you had mentioned for earlier. IOS. Yeah. Uh, what I would say is that let's not limit it only to Apple Silicon. We can also talk about iOS All that later true, on. Yeah. yeah, everything. True, true. Everything that and see how sense. that unfolds. And I, yes. I'm actually quite curious to see browsers, like re revisit browsers at this stage in general. Mm -hmm. It'd be okay. nice to see with the difference between Firefox and Microsoft actually making a decent browser, you know, <laughs> right. and, uh, and Safari and comparing true. those and maybe even yeah. looking at some of the smaller players 
old old behemoths in the in the industry like opera that okay. still exists and do yes. really well and yeah. and looking at some of the smaller newer players like uh UC and Brave and UC. whatever yeah UC is banned yeah. i think in india now uh it's a chinese one so yeah i'm yeah. guessing yeah. it is yeah 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 this i've had this i've had this uh, idea about the internet where you have essentially three internets in the world and mm-hmm. one small black hole where no there is nothing which is north korea but you have like one internet which is russian right right because they have their own search engine they have their own uh, social media mm-hmm. everything yes. and then you have your one internet which is all china china yeah. and then one internet which is the rest of the world rest which is run world. primarily by america <laughs> yeah. so yeah. i feel like if india does this and focuses on building their own internet or like internet ish stuff like yeah. your own okay. maps your own okay, search okay, your okay. own okay. mailing like we did have our own mailing which got bought over and then got ruined but you know so i think that could be something interesting in that move mm-hmm. yes made let's in see. india make in india make in india Make in India. We are made in India. <laughs> yeah, we are all made in India. <laughs> yeah, export mall. Export, yes. <laughs> cool. All right. So then let's end this episode. Knuckle, any last words? Um, uh, tell us if you like this format where we interview people. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and maybe it's not a bad idea. Maybe like, uh, because... uh we know uh udit is a photographer and uh, i would like i would be interested to know how he because i have a really tough time managing my files mm mm-hmm. uh pho- okay. photographs and even uh, videos and photos because i do take a lot of videos so i need to manage those and okay. uh, we can we can chat about that we can chat with the uh, tj yeah. again about another of his expertise maybe if you find me expert in something then you can talk <laughs> about that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. What is Nakul an expert in? You're an expert in not being an expert. Yes. So oh. I'll, you, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll teach you how to ruin your productivity. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but like, I think I can, I can talk about productivity. Yeah. You can talk about productivity. You can talk about how to subscribe to shit. <laughs> yeah. And, and how to it unsubscribe <laughs> and stop subscribing to it. Yes. No, yeah, I think that's an interesting idea. We can focus on a topic that's more uh our focus. Yeah. And the other like individual focus and then the other yeah. two can sure. discuss it with them from their point of view, maybe knowing less or not knowing anything at all. Uh would be interesting, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, or did any any last words? Well, for now at the ARM is so new, everything is just speculation. So, let's see what uh, how many intel based laptops do they bring up in the coming few months or do they transition totally to arm or no so we'll just have to wait and watch yeah yeah cool okay so uh, i'm glad that our uh, deep dive deep 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 dive <laughs> into wwdc is now over <laughs> uh we we'll, we are trying to change our podcast a little bit so obviously we're going to try to make it uh maybe focus around a little bit more entertaining content or entertainment content uh in the past we've done app coverage and things more focus around that uh one of the ideas that was floated by knuckle of course was to start focusing on maybe movie reviews or something like that so now this is where we are going to try to explore a little more absolute cast obviously doesn't have necessarily a set format or a set topic we are pretty open that way so we are going to explore and you guys our listeners the guys who watch our podcast it's very important for you to chime in let us know what you want to see what you want to hear how you how, which format you like and that will help define our course at least for the next maybe yeah. decade of episodes or two decades of episodes yeah. <laughs> so we could we could do it like that i would really like to leave it open for you guys so so yeah. for the next few episodes expect us to talk more about movies more entertainment stuff and potentially some apps and some uh tech focused things like browsers like we talked about here uh and that's about it so yeah great all right all right all right so thank you guys for listening to this episode of course you can always watch our episodes on youtube as well and if you like this uh episode do subscribe to our podcast it's available on any podcast provider that you that you use or don't use it might be a nice time to get into podcast if you're watching this on youtube and if you are listening to it and you want to see what we look like or, or 
I would spare you the trouble. Just listen to us on the <laughs> podcast. That's fine. <laughs> but you can always see us on YouTube as well, and you can leave us comments. Uh, you can get in touch with us on Twitter at Absolute Geeks. Uh, we're ready to answer any questions. If you hate us, you can shout at us on Twitter as well. That's fine. <laughs> you can leave us nasty comments on YouTube. Everything is welcome. Uh, right? That's the end of WWDC for us. Thank you guys for listening and peace. Peace. peace.